Well, welcome everyone. I'm glad to have you here in this big number. And I would like to, to start uh, presenting my talk. Okay, uh, first I would like to introduce myself because I'm uh, not a regular speaker on the conferences. So I'm uh, working as a software developer from October 2000. I have various experience in C, C++, C-sharp, Java. And the reason for that is that I was working in an outsourcing company. And that company is uh, Levi9 Serbia. And from April 2012, I'm the coordinator of a uh, main project. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I was you know, trying to do some changes in how the leadership of the project functions. So uh, we are now having the technical board, uh, which I'm a member of, and there are five of us uh, which are actually uh, leading the project. So who we are? Uh, there are about uh, 50 active developers working on this project and we have additionally over uh, 200 contributors uh, that are also uh, helping us to gain the in emulation. So uh, team contains of uh, experienced developers. Uh, we have some people from gaming industry, but we also have people that are uh, from other industries or you know, just emulation enthusiasts. Uh, community. Uh, community is rather big. Uh, it's, uh, you know, con consists of the developers from the different experiences. And we have a lot of uh, contributors coming from different backgrounds. Uh, mostly they are, you know, uh, interested in gaming development, but not all. Uh, also, we have the great help from uh, software dumpers, and they are helping us preserving the software in general. So uh, those people are, you know, mostly enthusiasts uh, trying to find some old software or when they find some board uh, that they are not aware of what is about, uh, they just dump the ROM, send it to us, uh, try to find some documentation, send us images, and try to help in, in, in any way. So we also have uh, documentation acquirers, and they are really of great help. And they help us in a way that they provide us with the documentation for specific uh, parts that are used in the hardware or uh, some uh, software documentation, anything that could actually help us. Also, we have a lot of testers. I mean, all the users uh, of our uh, software, uh, we think that uh, for, of them as a testers. And uh, there is a great site, uh, Main Testers, uh, which uh, enables you to uh, enter your bug reports. And we looked at uh, all, all the time and try to fix and help people. So, uh, what is the meme? Um, when I uh, supply this talk, I <laughs> didn't put the uh, what it's all about, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the reason for it, it was that I was planning for talk to be more about general ideas of modernization and keeping the legacy code alive. Uh, but at the end, I came to a mixture of, <laughs> of things and ideas that I would like to present here. So, uh, MAME is a variation for multiple arcade machine emulator. And it's a project that was started by a friend uh, uh, from Italy, Nicola Salmoria, and he started that project in 1997. The uh, project was uh, initially for a DOS, and uh, it used the Allegro uh, library for graphics output, had a lot of assembly language in it, and also had, uh, uh, it was written in C. So, uh, in parallel to that, uh, about a few months later, a mass uh, project started as a sister project. Uh, mass is abbreviation for um, multiple uh, multi emulation 
system. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, it's. Uh, we never actually agreed <laughs> what you know <laughs> what should be, but it was really a, a mess uh, at the beginning, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> name stand, and we thought it was not that good idea to keep it running like that, you know. So that's one of the reasons we, after the join, decided to leave the name of main. And uh, main, you know, goal for for us is preservation of software of any kind, and uh, that's why we uh, afterwards acquired Mass, and we we tried to put all devices uh, to emulate all devices that have CPU on them, and not just that. Uh, and uh, we placed. Uh, goal to be accuracy over performance. So that's one of the things that people don't like about our project. I'm aware of that, we're all aware of that. Uh, but the issue is uh, that we, as we have a main goal, preservation of software, we need to preserve it in a way uh, so that uh, everything is uh, looking as authentic as possible. And the uh, only way to do that is to put accuracy over everything else. Uh, it's not that we don't care about performance, we care a lot and we try to, to improve that. And one of the reasons uh, why we moved uh, to C++ uh, was mainly to make things clearer for us and to, to enable us to, to produce you know, more performant code uh, since we will you know, just remove all the uh, the things that are not you know it's so important and we will see the the problem itself so we can def uh, strictly see uh, where the performance problems are so uh, there are of course a lot of misconceptions about our project so it's not made for you to play the <laughs> games for free that's definitely but it's what the most people are using it <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, MAME is not game itself. I mean, we uh, we sometimes have uh, bug reports. Uh, I, I think that would be nice, you know, just to have this one, this part here in this game. And we said we didn't wrote that game. I mean, we just emulate that. It's nothing we can do about it. Um, it was seen for a long time as a way to sell new arcade cabinets. And unfortunately, that was one of the reasons why we started with, um, uh, with the license that prohibited uh, commercial use for our software because uh, most of the commercial uses was that people made an arcade cabinet, uh, put MAME on it, put uh, illegally acquired ROMs on it, and sell that. And sell that under our name, you know, without anything giving back to the community. So uh, it's uh, it is the thing that we actually needed to. So so we have the trademark uh, on the name name. So essentially, you should you could not you know sell uh, something under that name without first consulting uh, owners, or uh, but you know uh, people basically by selling that uh, are breaking so much other laws. So <laughs> this one is 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 really. Uh, not applicable that way. Uh, so we are also not the platform for enhancing games, but uh, we are changing in a way uh, that we help you to preserve the look and feel of the games. So recently we start uh, adding support uh, for you to, to be able to see how actually screen looked like on the CRT monitor. Why preservation of software is uh, that important? Uh, well, companies do not back up all their software. I mean, they release some things and then they release a new version and you can find a new version and they just delete the old and they have their, you know, archives, but they don't, I mean, it's, it's really hard even for them to find some things there and things get lost, of course, I mean, it's just that popular software is all over the place and when five, ten years <laughs> comes, you know, 
things get lost. Uh, storage mediums are unreliable. Uh, you know, the software for in 70s and 80s, it was mostly on cassettes, on diskettes. So it's, uh, it's a bit unreliable medium, especially uh, four quarter inch discs are, you know, <laughs> quite <laughs> easy to, to break. So yeah, it was, you know, unreliable in any way. Even the current CD-ROMs, you know, you write, you, you can't read them for a, after a year or two. Uh, and it's, for us, it was just that, it was just easy to find if software is good, well known, but what about things that are, you know, also good, but, you know, not for, not popular in that time. Uh, it's also not possible to buy software, you know. Uh, I don't know, there are a lot of Microsoft guys here. Uh, could I buy MS-DOS right now? I don't think so, you know. And, I mean, we, uh, the problem about the legal things is that uh, you can't buy something, but you also, there is no other way for you to acquire it, you know. And we try to keep this uh, on a legal grounds. We, we do not distribute any of this. Uh, we just, uh, you know, uh, trying to find it, uh, index all the software, uh, if it's... Uh, uh, ROM dump, it's much easier, you know, it's, uh, uh, we, we, we put the uh, CRC32 and SAJ1 of, of ROMs, also the size, so you can, uh, you know, have one-to-one -to, -one, uh, to the real hardware, but uh, about the floppies and cassettes, it's a bit trickier because there is no universal, you know, format how to store them, so that becomes the problem. And uh, what we would <coughs> like MIME to be used for? Well, we would like you to use it for, to learn about the old hardware, you know, to understand, to understand things from the past, to be able to, 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 to develop a, a new software for that old hardware. Because uh, the thing that you can do now is that you can have a, a really good development tools, even for the, those old, uh, CPUs and uh, you now have um, uh, you can use MIME as debugger. You can create your even your virtual machine, you know, mm -hmm. different one. Uh, so you know you have the parts. You would like to make your own computer, and the way to do it is just to play inside the source and to to create your own emulation of of your imagined machine. And I think it's a, it's a really good practice ground for the new C++ features because uh, code is rather big. What we don't do? Uh, we don't emulate recent hardware, if it's not, of course, permitted by authors. Uh, thing is that we also do not uh, support recent software, also less permitted, but uh, thing about software and hardware, we try to keep that three-year-old three -year, uh, uh, rule so if something is uh, out of, uh, and, I mean, end of production was three years ago, uh, then we can, you know, be sure that there is no uh, financial impact to the other software developers because we are also software developers. We care about other companies. I mean, we don't wish uh, to make them trouble. We wish to, uh, for our kids to live. We had some uh, issues, I mean, in the past, for example, with uh, Cave, a company that's from Japan and that produced uh, arcades, and we emulated a board that was about 10 years old, you know, and we saw no problem, and we put on our side, there is a line that which said, if you think that uh, our job is... Uh, in conflict with your job, and we will remove the emulation for that. It's, it's not a problem at all. And they contacted us, and we, we removed everything from our repositories, and there was really not a problem, but the thing was that they were still using the same hardware from 10 years, you know. And, I mean, it's not, I mean, they, they were also selling rights, okay, that's, that's the other thing, but uh, they were selling rights for the same game on 
Xbox 360, but that's a different platform. It's not that software uh, in general. Uh, but uh, after a few years, uh, they just disappeared from that part of job. So uh, basically, it was uh, there was no problem for us to to put that back. So. You know, if there is anyone having a problem with that, I mean, uh, we, we are always ready to uh, talk and to remove any part of the emulation that's uh, problematic. We also, and also we don't uh, try to improve how things look and work. So, yeah, that's I already described. So, what we actually do? We put this into this. And, <laughs> yeah, that's the die shot from 6502, and that was made by, by Visual 6502 uh, guys. And there is also uh, other side, Silicon Prawn. Uh, they uh, make a lot of die shots uh, from old CPUs, and not just CPUs. Uh, they made it for the uh, sound chips, video chips, um, floppy disk controllers, you name it. You know. Uh, process is uh, not that complicated, uh, but it's, uh, you know, poisonous. <laughs> I mean, uh, you need to remove the plastics and you need to use the chemicals in order to remove the first parts and to be able to get to the die shot. So what uh, this helped uh, is that we, this exactly thing, help us to build the uh, cycle accurate uh, emulation for the 6502. So uh, that, I think, is the only way you can actually emulate uh, undefined behavior. So just to look at the die shot to see how it really worked and to see internal registers because those are not documented, to see the microcode, uh, you can plainly see that if you know how to look and yeah. Okay, let's look at the, some of the current statistics. Uh, here is uh, statistics for our code. So we have over 150 megabytes of source. <laughs> and you can see that basically most of the things are C++, C++ and C++ headers as well. Uh, we also, you can see that there are comments, a lot of comments in code, but it's, uh, uh, we try to keep the uh, source code as a documentation for a specific uh, driver that we are emulating. So it's, uh, comments are really important for us. Uh, and I will give you one more. It's a GitHub trending. Uh, you can see uh, this is from 2008. Problem is that uh, we were, I mean, uh, we are on the GitHub uh, from about 2014, I think. And, uh, or 15, 15, sorry. And before that, uh, we were at closed SVN. Uh, we put our code publicly, but only when the uh, you know release time comes. And you can see I started to work as a uh, coordinator 2012, and you can see those erratic lines start to <laughs> going up. So I, I, I I'm known as a, a bit as a people pusher. You know, I like to you know push some ideas. I try to also lead by example, so I try to look, do a lot of things. Uh, but then when people start seeing, you know, you do a lot of changes on that and that, then they start also doing that and it's, it's kind of fun, especially for the open source projects. And you can see here how we grow during the time. Uh, we started, I mean, uh, just for the naming convention, I'm not sure if can be seen uh, there, but uh, you can see just the dates. Uh, it's still February of this year. Uh, so you can see how we actually grow through the time. So we start just for uh, five different emulators, and then it's just static, and we are now over 35,000. So 
it's a it's a big number uh, those are uh, I, I mean you, you have to see it as a different machines uh, those are not all different machines those are sometimes same machine running different software and maybe the best thing to, to take a look would be those uh, parent drivers uh, that can be seen here but uh, as if, if we uh, go back uh, here uh, you can see that there are 10,000 of files and there is about uh, 2,000 uh, of driver files so uh, we are basically emulating 2,000 uh, different hardware configurations different hardware yeah, configurations, we can say it like that. But uh, after uh, that, there is a specific, spe uh, specific things that are just uh, for uh, some machines and they are running uh, for arcades, uh, you have the fixed software uh, per machine, so you can't change it. And uh, that's the reason why we have over 35,000. Uh, okay, let's move back. Uh, so what are the development tools we are using? We are using uh, on Windows, we have MSYS2 uh, with MinGB uh, and also we support Clang and Visual Studio 2015. On Linux is GCC and Clang and on OS X or Mac OS we support uh, Xcode and Clang. Uh, commercial tools that we are using is uh, uh, one of the things that we are using is ReSharper C++ uh, and it's really good in combination with Visual Studio. It really helped us to do a lot of stuff. And uh, since we moved to the new license, which is open source, uh, it was really easy for us to acquire the licenses. And thanks to the JetBrains for that. Uh, we also used uh, PBS Studio. And the reason for that is that they did analysis in 2012 about our code. And as you say, the, you, you can see the link here, but it's software diseases uh, about using MEM sets. And it was really, really a big problem for us. And uh, that's the thing that was left over from the C days. And that produced a lot of things, a lot of problems for us. And we used the evaluation version of PBS Studio to fix some of those but uh, we think we can use it more. Why we do it? Well, JFK says we do things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. <laughs> and that's not one of the, I mean, that's the, one of the reasons why we are doing it, but we are mostly doing it for fun, to be honest. Okay, let's see how MAME looks now. Uh, well, this would be some initial screenshot uh, we, uh, we are not uh, that user-centric as others. <laughs> you can see that by design. And this one is new improved design, so <laughs> uh, you can imagine the old one. Well, we didn't have that picker at all, uh, so everything was basically command line only. Uh, okay, this is the meme running 1942 game, uh, 1920, uh, 1941, sorry, and you can see debugger there. So uh, while running a game, you can always see the debugger. You can put the breakpoints inside the emulation. You can uh, check the memory. Uh, you can see the log lines for it. So it's quite useful. Uh, especially if you are, for example, developing a new software for that old hardware. And we are really proud to our debugger there, and it's quite mighty. Uh, we are also planning to do some things uh, because we use Lua internally for plugins right now, and I hope we will use it also in debugger to extend it and to add new capabilities. Uh, you can see a computer running here. It's Sun, too, and you can see the we, well, since it's still in work in progress phase, uh, you can see a lot of things uh, displayed on for debugging. You can uh, check there uh, what are the uh, unmapped uh, memory reads, writes. So so it's easy for you. Uh, basically, how you start? You start by 
just uh, putting the ROMs uh, for the machine and uh, you specify CPU and that's it. You put the empty uh, address map and that's about it. And then you see, you log and you see what's going on. And then you recognize the patterns. You, know, you can recognize, for example, initialization of various devices. And if you're not sure, you know, which one, I mean, documentation always help, but sometimes you don't have a documentation, you have to find it yourself. So. Uh, you just recognize patterns, you see how things work, and then you try to reverse engineer everything. Uh, this is one of the new things we do. Uh, if you can see uh, one image, yeah, that's far, far from me, is displaying uh, how we actually you know, display things in the display memory, so there are no effects that default view for us, but here uh, you have an uh, effect of displaying things on CRT. So you can see a scan lines, you can see everything. We are using shaders for it right now and it's starting to get cool. You can put, you know, burnout effect, you can put a lot of things and it really looks nice. And I will see to demo it to you so just you can see how it really works. Okay, let's move on to the topic why we are here. <laughs> so how the modernization started. Well, it was, you know, plain C project till 2009. And as you know, the, the, in that time, there was no C++ 11, of course. So we have to start with Aerojet, start to moving it to uh, C++. Uh, it was uh, C++ 98. Well, it was afterwards uh, converted to uh, 3 version, which was supported by the compilers at that, at that time. And since last year, we are trying to move to the modern C++. And what are the reasons for doing that? Well, it was our biggest problem was that it was really bad, bad learning curve for all of us, even the developers who worked on the project. So we couldn't, you know, understand uh, how everything is connected. So if someone left the team, and it's quite usual when you have an open source project that big, running for 20 years, you know, uh, it was hard to maintain that. Also, we couldn't find interest in new people because it was too hard for them to track our code. So one of the reasons was, you know, just like, let's move to something that is more for people that they can understand, they can use, they can see how it's working. And uh, also we had a problem, you know, that uh, there are a lot of uh, global things in code, uh, usages of uh, some parts of code were, not, you, you know, you, you were not sure that it will run if you have two instances of that, so that was quite bad. And we wish to have it as code as documentation. You know, that's our, yeah, we are documentation project after all. Yeah. These are were the first steps. So we first compile our C code as C++. And let's see what happened. You know, C++ is more you know, strict and we got a lot of errors and warnings you know, in our code uh, just due to that. So we also put the uh, treat warning as error. So uh, that's the rule that sometimes, I mean, it's hard to apply, but you, you, you need to do it anyway. And uh, there are things that are just, you know, very hard to make uh, compile on <coughs> multiple compilers, same code without any warnings. So due to some error, I mean, differences, just how the things work. And uh, we made some exceptions for that. So we disabled a few of the warnings, but it's not uh, that large list. And also we try to use multiple compilers on multiple platforms just to prove ourselves that we are moving in the right direction. Object-oriented programming. Well, reason for using it was you know, clear. We want people to think uh, in ways 
to see the code in a way how it's easier for them to understand, not for machine to understand. And that's why uh, one of the reasons why we have moved to C++. So you have various devices. So if I have CPU, it's clearly a device. And if I have a video chip, it's another device. So I can you know, see some patterns there. And also I can group them, I can create interfaces, so I can uh, see, okay, all sound chips have uh, some similarities, so I will put that in the interface. And that's how we started, you know. And, you know, it's, it's a way how you express your thoughts, you know. It's object-oriented. I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way to, to just how to, you can document your uh, thoughts and how can you them. Uh, well, there are first problems that we, uh, that occurred to us were that we had a lot of global variables, large number of macros, we still have macros, and we had no tools to help us moving from this. So it was all manual labor. Yeah, it's a team effort, but uh, we kept it really close. <laughs> Just few people worked on the moving to the C++, C++ and the reason for that is that you know, we didn't wish for the project to stop during this period. So, so uh, uh, in that time when this modernization started, I was the part of the mass project, not on the, of the main project, and Aaron Giles was uh, leading the main. So after each release, uh, he did a lot of changes. He sent me some regex he used in his code, and then I do that uh, thing on the uh, on the uh, mess site. And uh, we tried to keep that uh, you know aligned and uh, just to be easier for us all to to maintain. But uh, what we have learned there is that uh, when you have some deprecated part of code, you just need to remove it right away, you know, after you remove you know, last usage of it, because otherwise people will keep using it in the future, and the thing is that you can't sync, you know, more than 50 people that easy, especially because they're, you know, on the different parts of the world. We also try to keep our track of our changes, uh, just so we can communicate to each other, and also, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, you see it's 150 megabytes. So if you just change one thing that is commonly used, it will take you hours just to do that. And we try to afterwards, after all changes, to clean our code, to reformat it, so it's easier to maintain afterwards. Uh, when we moved to the, you know, we used, as I said, regex mostly. And I created a lot of custom-made tools just to recognize some patterns for me and to replace text. And that was basically it. But after uh, last year, we tried, you know, when we moved to the modern C++, we had a great help of Clang Tidy. And we used these to, to help us, you know, just uh, do some automatic work for us. And it really helps. I mean, you need to you know, recheck everything afterwards, but it helps a lot. It, it catch most of the, the uses. So uh, during that work, uh, and what we have found that we are missing some things. So we created some things for us. We created make unit clear. And why is that? It's uh, thing is that people forget to initialize variables <laughs> and uh, that was the most common thing on all devices or uh, driver implementations and what we did is that we uh, added this one. Uh, so it's quite, uh, you know, simple and you're actually just mem setting uh, everything to zero before you, uh, after you allocate and then you create object on that part of memory. So you have everything initialized to zero. <laughs> and that really helped us, you know, uh, to get us a, some time. So we have enough time afterwards to clean up our implementation. 
Also, Veridic templates helped us a lot because they just, you know, removed a lot of boilerplate code. And there are a few examples here. I mean, uh, this is for our delegate uh, implementation. I will talk about it later. But uh, uh, we needed to have these delegate traits for each uh, and every. I mean, uh, we had, for example, up to eight uh, parameters allowed. So we needed to have this kind of code for each number of types. So, and the same one for a second. Uh, ConstExper, uh, that was the great one uh, to remove a lot of uh, defines in our code. And here you can see uh, how it works. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a bit specific for our usage because we, we need to, you know, uh, execute our code on the, uh, for example, different endings of, uh, of a CPU that we are running, but also we, you, we have endings of CPU that we are emulating, and then you need to convert to the proper one during that time. Uh, also, we have yeah, the, those custom operations. We use it you know, just to, to recalculate everything during the compile time, and it really helped uh, to improve. Uh, there are also new features uh, in, added in C++11 that really helped us. And what they have removed for us uh, was a lot of assembly and uh, code speci uh, that is uh, specific for uh, op specific operating system. And, but there are a few things that we couldn't be able to remove. And those are uh, allocation of memory for execution. I'm not sure if that is considered at all, but you know, this is the implementation for Linux and Windows. We have the uh, direct recompiler in our code and we need to allocate memory in order to uh, generate code so we can execute it, you know. And we do it on runtime, so yeah, that's what we are using right now in order to do that. There are things that we wish to use. Uh, there are coroutines, of course. And one of the reasons is that uh, wait states in uh, CPUs are, I mean, on, on computers are actually working that way. You know, you, you just block yourself until uh, you get the data. And that's exactly what Coroutines does. And we have experimented with uh, one library time ago, but we get uh, bad results just because it was tactful imp implementation it was crashing all over, you know, because we have, during the execution, uh, we have a large, um, all devices uh, can, can have a large uh, stack allocation, so that makes things harder for us. Also, uh, we would like to use modules. Right now, uh, we have a really long compile time, it's over half hour the latest hardware and that's slow for us. I mean, the uh, thing is that we used some things to, prevent, to, to make that faster, but you know, it's still, still very slow. And uh, also we would like to use GSL. I have tried uh, some tools for static analyzers, but probably we will just start using GSL as a header file and nothing else. And from the touch side, yeah, well, we would like to make our Android build fully working. Uh, right now it's working, but not that good. Uh, we don't have iOS support. Uh, we don't have a console builds. And the reason for that is mostly a legal thing because you know, we can't acquire that uh, licenses for the development because we are not the company. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we would like to, to, to run it on the VR system, HoloLens, and things like that. I mean, it, it's not just that we are want to do that, but we, we would like to others to do that as well, you know? And the reason is, well, 
why, why, why wouldn't you like, you know, to, to, to put a VR set and just go through arcades and play a game, select the game you wish and stop it? You know, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's how it, you know, you, you will remember your childhood and, yeah. And also what we wish is to try to make it more interaction with the real hardware. So if we emulate something, we want it to be able to connect to the outside world and to work. And we have the networking support. It's working. I mean, you can, you know, uh, start an OS, uh, uh, Mac OS uh, emulation for the Motorola era, or you can start a PC computer with Windows and you can browse on the internet. It will not show you much because you don't have the JavaScript support, but it will work. Uh, we, to, uh, to help us with, we use the Genie project generator. And uh, Juni Project Generator, I will have a lightning talk on this tonight, so I will be really quick. Uh, it, uh, we use it as, uh, because it was, you know, uh, it, it could generate uh, all, uh, for all compilers that we are targeting. It was based on Lua, and it was really easy, extensible. And it enables us to create uh, smaller custom builds. Uh, so, for example, I could make, uh, I could say, okay, uh, create me a build just for uh, Commodore 64, and I will get just Commodore 64 and all related, uh, you know, devices that are needed for compilation. So we have some magic there, uh, and this is how it actually looks like. I mean, it's quite simple. Uh, it's easy to to follow, you know, what it's doing. So that was the main reason uh, why we have used it. Okay, let's see on a small example how MAME actually works. You have, uh, I, I used a, a really small example. You have here just a, a state class uh, to represent your emulator. Uh, there was a dummy output. Okay, you have the address map here. And you can see uh, in address map uh, that it's 8-bit uh, address map and you have the ROM at the beginning and you have a small amount of RAM. Uh, here you have IO ports connected. You have that AV write, uh, which uh, will lead you to the, uh, to the other I mean, it's using delegates uh, here. I will explain what delegates are. Uh, and uh, since this machine doesn't support uh, input here, uh, there is empty input definition, and you have uh, just the definition uh, of parameters needed to uh, make a, a good default uh, configuration for RS232 uh, 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 configuration. And you have here machine configuration, uh, which will define which CPU is used. Uh, and you connect here the memory map, uh, IO map, you put some callbacks here. And at the end, you have the ROM start. Uh, this is the place in which you put the, uh, what are the CRC32 uh, and SAJ1 of your ROMs and uh, you have just computer definition which will help you find it. And that's about it. I mean, it's, it's quite simple. Um, and uh, you see that it's mostly macros. And the reason is we try to, uh, to make it more look like uh, documentation which describes the machine and not uh, C++ code. And uh, that was, I mean, uh, if you take a look at the device implementation, that's clean C++ code. There is no things like this. But if you look at uh, the, the emulator uh, code, it's about this. And I mentioned delegates. Uh, what are the delegates? Uh, if you have been on the Include OS presentation, you have seen uh, they're using them also. And uh, I didn't know that, so, <laughs> so they're using totally different uh, start point, but uh, basically idea is same. Uh, you have some class here. Uh, you have the type def definition here just to, to, to be clear for the callback de delegate. And you create, uh, we use some macro to help us uh, for the code to just to look nicer. So you just have this func uh, which will 
uh, take you the class and uh, you can split the class and uh, what method you are recalling and you, co you can connect it to the uh, instance of class you are calling. And why we need delegate? We need delegate because we need to provide callbacks uh, and we need to, uh, to do it uh, after, sometimes after initialization. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit um, uh, difficult sometimes uh, because you actually are not sure what is connected where until everything is initialized. So you need to, to have that uh, laid, laid by. Then. <laughs> and it's really a minimal cost because it's using uh, method function pointers. And uh, since this was implemented in the period of C++ 98, it had some uh, strange things in it. So we cleared it up and we moved it to, I, I have showed you the example with the templates. We use now Veredic templates, we cleaned up things. And also we have moved, uh, moved it so it can work on the ARM64, it can work on MIPS, uh, it can work on various platforms. And you can see here that you have basically mostly about two times speed than using the std function bind. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I mean, I would not go in, into much details about it. If you're interested, there is, uh, uh, you, you have a link here. Uh, it's a public, you can use it, you can try it. Uh, we have also a lot of third-party libraries. I will just mention four of them. Uh, one, uh, I will start from bottom up. Uh, GLMAT, I think it's really interesting. And uh, <laughs> it helps a lot with uh, uh, adding support for the 3D hardware. And uh, we are actually doing the calculations ourselves. Uh, when we are emulating, uh, for example, Voodoo card, and or we are working on the uh, emulation of Model 2 machine, uh, then we need to do calculations ourselves. And to do that, we are right, uh, now using the GLMAT. Uh, we start using it just a few places, but I think we will move on. Uh, we use uh, Lua uh, for plugins. And the reason for it is that people would like to have some things that we consider harmful, like support for the uh, things like high scores, which can affect ex uh, the emulation itself. So we can't officially support it, but uh, you can use it, use a plugin for it, and you ha can have a, a high score support on machines that didn't save their states. Also, uh, we are using RapidJSON. <laughs> Uh, in uh, correlation with BGFX, uh, that is a graphics library. And uh, BGFX is uh, app agnostic, so, uh, and support a lot of rendering backends. And reason for using it is that we would like to see, for you to see that, uh, those effects, you know, on each and every platform. But we also uh, do not wish to, to create a, a uh, large boilerplate of our code, you know, to have support for OpenGL, to have a uh, DirectX support, because we are not graphics programmers, you know, we are emulator guys. And the uh, thing is that it also supports a lot of, you know, uh, platforms, so everything that we actually need to support is there even more. And this is how it looks like. And if you have worked uh, with the shaders for the OpenGL, it's almost like that. And it can transpile into uh, metal support, uh, it can transpile to DirectX. So you did that before, you know, in the, in, as the part of the uh, compile, in the compile time, and you have that uh, up and running. Okay, what we have also learned is make your own code public you will get uh, better feedback from users. Uh, you will be able to do a lot of cool stuff. And mm -hmm. we moved to the GitHub uh, just because of that, so we can better communicate with uh, interested people. And also, it really moved our pull requests you know, a lot. And we are really grateful that we have done that. Uh, why should you join the open source project? Well, I think 
everyone should, you know, join at least one <laughs> just to share your ideas. You know, you all have different ideas how things mm -hmm. should be done. You would like to, I mean, you can experiment there, you can improve your knowledge, uh, you can learn from others, and that's, you know, most important thing. And also you can meet a lot of people, learn from them, go to conferences, <laughs> and things like that, yeah. So it's, it's really cool stuff. Uh, what we wish to offer to C++ from our side? Well, we gained a lot of experience, especially with... Uh, using uh, these uh, delegates, callbacks. Uh, so I think we can create a proposal for such thing. I, I think I did it already, uh, but I was not uh, present at, uh, when the call was there. <laughs> so I didn't know about it, but never mind. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't mean made an official one. So, uh, well, we would also like to help uh, on um, input handling. Uh, based on these delegates, so for that is mostly for the other study group. Uh, that's now not just about 2D graphics, but also about the inputs. And also, uh, I think we will be good playground to test this math for 2D and 3D graphics because there are a lot of things going on. And thing is that you know also runtime shader transpiling. It could be interesting to, to join in. And let us be your playground, after all. I mean, you, you can all join and we can all play together. It's a sandbox. Okay, I would like to make a, a small demo for you. <laughs> I know you will be waiting for this, but yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, for the timings, a uh, question was if uh, is RAM emulation uh, was that accurate? And well, uh, this is a uh, thing is that uh, we are now basically it's not that accurate, you know, because uh, that part is not implemented like that. But uh, CPU emulation speed is real; it's really one to one. So um, other things than that, uh, you would uh, for this we would need to work on it to make it, you know, just one to one with the reality. Uh, but thing is that, uh, for example, for the sound, uh, it's really imp timings are really important, and otherwise you will get uh, wrong results. Uh, same go. I mean, if you are emulating uh, latest hardware, it's it's easy. I mean, they're using you know a lot of chips which are well documented, and it's not that hard. But if you are emulating some old hardware that uh, was cheap. Uh, they probably use some tricks uh, to get uh, things on screen. So actually what you need to do is you need to emulate all the tricks they, they have used. In the, and that's, that could be really heavy job. So uh, let me just uh, do one. Oh, I always do the wrong one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let's see what. Well, because it was a uh, Commodore 64, I would like to show you the other machine. Yeah. And, uh, okay, it's a Spectrum. And we can do something like this. Okay. And we can run, oh, sorry. Just a second. And, and you can see, uh, it, this is not uh, the really good speed because uh, uh, the emulation of the CRT gives uh, some effect to it, but it's how it would look like. And uh, if I go and, oh, again, if I go and do this, uh, this is our internal menu, so you can go and change some parameters which we are using to the so if I play a bit with some parameters let me see okay this one I can change some colors and effects here you see and you can get a, a, 
a really bad TV set there <laughs> connected to your machine. So that was basically intention. And you're probably looking for the real games. Uh, I, will, I will play it without uh, the effects just to, to get the real time speed. And here's the one. So don't tell them, please. Okay. We will put this one and it. Uh, you can insert coins and we can start playing games. So, uh, anyway, I'm really bad at games. I don't play them much. And I just <laughs> would like to know how they worked and to make them work, you know. And it's a. Uh, oh, sorry. R wrong button. Ah. <laughs> Excuse me, it was the wrong button. Uh, uh, while we are here, I uh, would like. Uh, I will probably need assistance from Jason. Uh, uh, oh, it was um, Pong, right? And uh, oh, quick, uh, sorry, quick load. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here you have a debugger running, so I will I will show you like with that. So let's move on. Uh, so please, Jason, it's sys. Which number? Fourteen ninety-six. Okay, and we have that. <laughs> so, yeah. so you can use that, and you can play your games. And the good stuff is here. If you wish uh, to to debug things, you know, you can go to the memory, and you can. Oh, sorry, I am bad with this. Uh, okay, never mind. I mean, we can enlarge that, but. Oh, it's a it's a bit hard on on this keyboard, uh, but uh, anyway, you can uh, go through the memory and watch uh, for the states of each devices you have here, and it, it, it's really it's really helping you to get uh, into 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 a, be able to de develop for such an old machine. <laughs> I will close it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's then move to the questions, if you have some. Oh, please. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we have uh, regression tests, uh, but regression tests are done uh, on a specific way. I mean, uh, we 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 don't have the 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 uh, test suite for the just doing the code checks, you know, because it's a it's a thing that people do not like to do. I mean, that's uh, sometimes it's hard because you need to to test something uh, that is you know you don't know how it's working. So how would you test it? It's, it's, it's a bit tricky, you know. You, you, you need to, I mean, if you have a, a good documentation, then it's easy. But uh, we have a, a integration tests, basically. And what we test is just looping through the usual test cases, going around and, and checking if there are differences in execution of those. If there are crashes, especially, so we save the backtraces and also uh, we do if there are differences in screens. For example, after 20 seconds, it must be perfectly same. You know, and if there is a difference, then there is probably some graphics issue. And sometimes is expected because you change something, but we need to confirm that. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, the question was, uh, can we play uh, also 3D games or is it just for the shaders? Uh, I mean, we have emulation of 3D games, but we do not use the gra graphics cap capabilities of, of your GPU right now. Uh, thing is that uh, there is a great difference between hardware in past and now, and we would actually need to do the mapping between those to make it uh, work the same. And one of the things that we are uh, waiting for the BGFX outer uh, to work uh, a runtime uh, uh, transpiling of the 
shaders so we can actually do that. So that's, yeah, right now we are only using it to, to improve your, you know, to improve the display. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, uh, the question was, what's the most uh, current hardware we are emulating today? Well, uh, we can say it's a, it's, a, it's a PC architecture from this Pentium era. Uh, we do not like to get the legal issues, you know, and that's, I mean, uh, there are a lot of big players there. And we do not wish to, I mean, th there are still games sold for the PS2. And we do, I mean, th they are you know, <laughs> made uh, by some company. And we do not wish to, to break that. And uh, we do not wish to, uh, to have a problems with big companies. Uh, we would rather like them uh, to take this part of codes and use it to, you know, internally if they wish. And we were be sure to help them if they wish to. But the uh, thing is that, yeah, uh, we also emulate, uh, you know, uh, mostly from the mid-90s, let's say. There are some from the 2000s, you know, beginning of the 2000s was, let's say, the, the last you know, period of time we, which we emulate good, yeah. Yeah, yes, please. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. The the question was uh, how does the switch from the C to C plus plus help us develop uh, for the new hardware? Well, um, it, it, it helped us uh, in a way that we were able easier to develop new emulation. That's for sure because we were uh, we were able to see uh, patterns and to extend some things, and it, it was easier for us, for example, to to emulate some video chips which had a, a slightly uh, smaller differences and you, you can actually see that in code so it's easy to, to, to follow and also it helped us uh, to develop for the latest hardware in a sense that on hardware that we are running at because we gain some speed because of the optimizers are good at uh, optimizing code that is made for the C++. You know it's after all if you are using C code in a in C++ compiler, it probably will not be that good optimized as because this is their major, you know. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, when you booted your uh, emulated Pentium, yeah. the, uh, the temperature sensor for the CPU was zero. Yeah. Is that because the temperature sensor isn't emulated or because yeah. it's emulated by different ports? Yeah, the, the, the question was for the PC emulation, there was temperature sensors saying that it's zero. And uh, is it emulated or not? No, it's not emulated. And the uh, thing that I'm working right now is um, gathering all the board information and biases for PCI era of uh, PC computers. So I'm trying to get that, uh, uh, get that running. So probably yeah, we will have uh, about Five thousand more machines emulated <laughs> quite soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it will it will take a lot of effort. I, I start to build one machine for myself so I can experiment. I mean that that's the only way you could actually see how it works. Yeah. Well, uh, if there is no more questions, I would like to thank you all for your patience, and I hope you had a good time today.